Hey there, Midas Letter subscribers. My guest now is Conrad Valesha. He's the CEO of ESE Entertainment Inc. Trading on the TSX Venture under the symbol ESE and trading in the United States under the symbol ENTEF. Conrad, welcome. Thanks for having me on. We're excited to jump into it. Yeah, you bet. All right, Conrad, quick overview. What is the business of ESE Entertainment? So as you guys all know, esports and gaming is an absolutely exciting, uh, monumental business opportunity at the moment. You know, it's a multi-billion dollar opportunity and ESC uh, really prides themselves as being the infrastructure ecosystem for esports and gaming. So, you know, our goal from day one has to become the largest infrastructure esports company in the world. So when I say infrastructure, we provide technology, media rights, tournament organization, a professional team, our sim grid, sim racing side of the business. So basically encompassing the entire ecosystem, a 360 approach to providing support and infrastructure to the whole gaming and esports ecosystem. Sure. Um, esports is something we're hearing more and more about every day. What is the about the size of the global total addressable market for esports? You know, there's a lot of different figures uh, floating around, but typically um, you hear a lot of the billion plus uh, opportunity for just esports alone. Obviously, gaming is even larger, so it's a multi billion dollar industry. But I think uh, esports is just going to climb up and catch up to that overall gaming uh, opportunity in the multi billions coming up in the future here. Sure. And so of all of the segments that you talk about there in the infrastructure side, is there one that's more of interest to ESC than others? Or are you taking a, a holistic approach to the entire industry? We're definitely taking a holistic approach, but just like any business, you always see kind of these different parts of business that are creeping up on others, uh, whether it's a bigger profit margin, for example, or opportunity size. Uh, what we've seen within our organization is the sim racing side of the business has tremendous margins, you know, 30, 40 plus percent on margins. And then from like a big blue sky opportunity, we're really seeing the media rights side uh, being this, you know, really massive opportunity. Um, you know, you look at, you know, getting like an NFL rights, let's use an example, or, you know, exclusive rights for a certain country or region. It's just such a larger, big blue sky opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right. So then uh, eSports is being, uh, is seeing rather an explosion in popularity in large part because of the global pandemic, I'm assuming. Has that been a growth factor? Yeah, I mean, you know, it just absolutely supercharged the industry. You know, we just saw the intake of inquiries, uh, the opportunities that pertain to sponsorship, advertising. It just absolutely supercharged our industry. Um, and I don't think it's going away. What it did is just shine a big, bright light on what ESC is doing and just in general, the, the industry. So the actual esports side, um, you know, getting non <clears throat> getting non gamers involved uh, in the gaming and just bring a whole different set of eyes uh, to the industry has been fantastic. Right. Uh, okay. So how does, uh, how does ESE make money? Where does your biggest revenue flow from? So as it pertains to revenue, that, that's something that we really pride ourselves uh, at ESC for is, you know, one of the few groups in esports that's actually generating meaningful revenues. Uh, and we actually have a very uh, balanced revenue. So when I said, you know, we have the technology side of the business, the media rights side of the business, uh, you know, and our teams, you know, we're generating revenues on all those fronts um, and it's very balanced. So, you know, you know, you could break it up like a pie in thirds, you know, we're really generating equal revenue from all those different elements. And we're really seeing an uptick as it pertains to revenue on the sim racing side. So I think, this year and moving forward, that's going to be a big revenue driver for us as well. So it's a really nice balance. Um, and as I said, those big blue sky opportunities in sim racing and on the media rights, I think will slowly start to creep up a little bit more compared to the rest. You bet. 
Uh, so what's a competitive landscape like in terms of uh, the whole industry? Is it a very crowded space? Or are you sort of off on it in a world of your own or what's what's the outlook there? I think that's the exciting part. You see, you know, there's a lot of fantastic companies whether EGLX, you know, surpassed a billion dollar market cap. They're generating meaningful revenues. Uh, where I see we're kind of on an island a little bit is we're one of the few groups that actually generates revenue. So that's the exciting part. So you see groups like EGLX getting rewarded for generating revenue. We feel like we're the next in line. Um, you know, and when you compare to other groups in the industry, uh, we have meaningful revenue and it's growing fast and we have a aggressive acquisition pipeline that just can continue to stack on more revenue. Um, so I think that's kind of a competitive, you know, advantage versus the other groups out there. Sure. How do you uh, how do you get to profitability? Are you guys profitable yet? You know, we're really lean. Our company's really lean. We have no debt. Uh, I think we could get to profitability by the end of the year this year, uh, and definitely in 2022, well, we'll see profitability. It just depends on how much we're going to reinvest into the business. If we scaled back the business a little bit, uh, I think we could hit that mark by the end of the year. But we really want to focus on growing, 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 and acquiring these new uh, accretive groups. Sure. So you acquired 51% uh, 50, interest in World Performance Group last month. Is acquisition your primary growth strategy or is it a balance of acquisition and organic growth? Once again, that's an exciting part. You know, we have a robust uh, acquisition pipeline, you know, over a hundred million in revenue in that pipeline. And we're going to be very aggressive with those acquisitions. However, it's nice to see that the actual core group is growing very fast as well. If you saw our last news release, we just signed a seven figure contract uh, to roll out a production of an esports show uh, coming up this year. So both sides are just firing on all cyl cylinders and we're generating, you know, big contracts. And we also have that huge growth from the acquisition side. Sure. Uh, does you, do you generate your audience at the expense of the physical sort of sporting audience globally, or is this a new audience that's complementary to the global physical audience? I think it's absolutely complementary, you know, and I think it's really heading in that direction. Uh, you know, I didn't mention it, but I'm a former professional athlete and the crossover into traditional sports, into music, into entertainment in general, um, you just see it more and more. And I mentioned the sim racing side of the business, you know, all these traditional sports are crossing over and vice versa. Uh, so I think it's just, it's like a mushroom effect. You know, we're really crossing over and there's just a completely new audience in general, right? That whole Gen Z audience wants a different product, a different product for them. Sure. So tell, tell me a bit more about your background. You say you're a professional athlete. Yeah, so I played in the CFL, um, did that for about five years. And, you know, it gave me a really great insight uh, into entertainment and business. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, pro sports uh, is entertainment and it's business. And I really got to see large scale, you know, ever from media rights to how teams are operated to how advertising works, sponsorship. I was always really keen to learn of how all those little intricate elements worked in a you know professional sports setting and the crossover to esports um, is identical in my opinion you know everybody tries to really overcomplicate esports and gaming but the similarities with what's already out there i mean it's just identical right it's just a little bit of a different flavor um, and we got to really capitalize on this is the next generation of sports you bet. All right, Conrad, that's a great introduction to the company. We're going to leave it there for now. We will come back to you soon in the future and see how you're making out. Thank you very much for your time today. Awesome. Thank you. Have a great Bye. day.